From the EPAWA headquarters in South Allentown, Pennsylvania, this is Weather Weeklies, an informative video blog on the ins and outs of weather that affect you most in the EPAWA coverage area. The thoughts and opinions of this video are those of the forecaster alone and may or may not reflect the thoughts of the EPAWA staff as a whole, nor its constituents. Now, without further ado, here is meteorologist Bobby Martrich with Weather Weeklies. And good Sunday morning to another edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, January 21st. Today, of course, is the championship games in football, and that's where I'm going to be doing uh, later today. But uh, we're here to start off with the uh, long-range forecast. Uh, both games tonight uh, in the uh, in Foxborough and Philadelphia look like they will go without a hitch, and it will be uh, have no weather issues whatsoever. And temperatures will be on the mild side for both games, so no weather weather issues for either location. Uh, here is the long range table that we had out from Friday, and uh, if you notice the the, the uh, long range table had a lot of transient up and down stuff, but the downs were only back to near to slightly above average. Okay, so we're going to discuss in this uh, why that is. We have uh, the the above average temperatures which we're experiencing now going through the twenty third. Okay, so today that'll go through Tuesday, and then we'll have a transient two-day shot. You see, these are only two-day shots, 24th, 25th, and then it warms up again. Another two-day shot, 29th, 30th. But both these are near average or near to slightly above average temperatures behind it. So they're not getting really brutally cold behind this, and it's a very quick shot of cooler air in between the above overall above average theme here. And then after that, the first week of February, for in a large part, is going to be above average also. Okay, we do transition, we think. We still think we transition during the second week of February. Okay, so that second week of February here shows uh, that transition to near average, but it's actually going to start off above average and then head to slightly below, so that by the time we get to the second week of February, uh, we are slightly below average, and that probably maintains through much of the rest of the month, if not all of the rest of the month, if the Euro weeklies are correct. And some projections of them out in Julian Oscillation. We're going to get into that. Uh, of course, these above average periods out ahead of it, uh, out ahead of each one of these systems that are coming in, is going to be warm. So they're expecting rain and rain. Those back to back systems are going to be dealing with. And then our winter storm signals are going to reappear in during that second week of February once we start getting transitioning to colder. Okay, so those are where our winter storm signals start reappearing. Do I think are going to be more beyond that? Absolutely. Uh, matter of fact, if we get toward the middle of the month, middle of February, we might have a significant storm signal start to appear, and we'll have to wait and see how that works out. Uh, but there are at least signs that that, that could occur, something significant uh, that could occur in the middle to the uh, second half of February. Getting a little bit too far there to, for specifics, but uh, we have the idea of the of uh, at least the signal there. So we're going to watch that, of course, when we get closer and, and uh, see how that works out. Uh, February, we adjusted last week to uh, near to slightly above average temperatures, zero to plus one. Do the same thing for January, okay? I think that the, you know, we were far enough below average to start the month of January uh, that even with this warmth, it probably only gets it back to near average, okay? So we're going to be pretty close to average. Same thing here in February. Start off warm. Uh, we might be changing this slightly below. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that works out. I don't want to jump on the, jump the gun on that just yet. Because I do think it's going to be above average to start the fe month of February. And that's going to go, uh, you know, for much of the first week. And uh, we'll see how far above average that skews everything. Because sometimes, sometimes it's difficult to move that down. So we'll, as far as a monthly average is concerned. Uh, so we'll see. We think uh, January near average snowfall, we've already had that. Uh, and the, the uh, February snowfall near to slightly above average just could end up being much above if things work out. We'll see. Don't want to jump the gun on that just yet. We're only at January 21st. We have a long way to go. When you're looking ahead a month, uh, things can look good, and sometimes they just don't work out. We'll see. I don't want to get anybody excited just yet, but the, the signals are there. So we will see the transient ups and downs in the meantime. This is looking at Monday evening, and you can see the above average warmth over us. All the cold temperatures are out here in this area in the western United States. Uh, colder than average, I should say. This is a this is a warmer than average uh, temperature regime that's going to be in place through Tuesday. Uh, this is all preceding a lakes cutter. Whenever you have a lakes cutter, it means a system is cutting up through the Great Lakes, moving up in this direction. You're bringing up the warm side of things uh, through our area. We're on the eastern side of this low, so the, the flow around uh, low pressure is counterclockwise, so it brings that low, the warm air from the south on the eastern side like this. If you're on the northwest side, it's bringing in the north, uh, the, the northerly winds, and you get the cold. And the snow, uh, where so anything every time you see you hear us talking about a lakes cutter, that is a warm system. So we have warm rain across the entire region, 
No chance for a wintry precipitation. We're going to be in the 40s and 50s. Okay. After that, we get into a transient up and down period where we have a two-day shot of cool air. This is not cold air. This is just cool, and that will be on Wednesday and Thursday behind our system. Okay. Friday, we start to turn the corner again. We start getting warmer once again, uh, heading into next week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And this is next Sunday with the next rain system moving in. So another lakes cutter, another system cutting through the Great Lakes. We are in the warm side of this. I know it's showing snow here on the map. This snow is not coming to us. This is just rain over here. This is on the warm side of this low pressure. So we were just speaking about rain again next Sunday. So we have it uh, Monday, late Monday night into Tuesday morning. That's this first one that we're dealing with this week. Okay, that's this one. All right, and then this one is going to be on Sunday. So if both are warm or both are very similar in the fact that you have a, a system cutting in the Great Lakes. You have warm air out ahead of it. You have the transient cool shot in between Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday are warm. Another transient cool shot the following Monday and Tuesday. Again, just two days, and then you're right back to warm temperatures again. Here's the 27th of January. You can see all the warmth again. All right, so here's the idea. That's the idea. You're up and down. I know that's not really good, but people don't want to hear that because then you're, you know, if you're prone to getting sick, that's not the up and down temperatures uh, are not good for that. Okay, now I'm going to take a different look at the uh, why we think this is going to turn around. Why we think this is going to turn around in February? Well, first we have the model saying so. Here is the this is the exact time the Super Bowl's on right here. You have all those cold air up here up in Canada. This is all making its way down to the southeast. So I think it comes in just after the Super Bowl or within a few days of it. Okay, so this is going to come down. Uh, won't be uh, it won't be bitterly cold just yet. At least I don't think so. It's not looking like the bitterly cold is going to get here. We're going to at least get into the slightly below average temperatures and change this uh, outlook of the, of the transient up and down stuff. We have like two or three, you know, three or four days of warmth followed by two days of, of cool and then back to three to four days of warmth and two days of cool. We're going to break that pattern and have a more prolonged, uh, at least slightly below average temperature pattern that's going to settle in. You can see the date of this. This is uh, this says February 5th, uh, but it's actually the evening of the 4th. Okay, so this is the day that this is when the Super Bowl is going on. This, this cold is getting ready to come in. All right, so that's what, uh, that's what we're looking at down the road. That's what the models say. Well, does that match anything else? Well, we got... Uh, a cute little graphic I did here. I like to use emojis here on this one because <laughs> uh, people understand emojis, I'm told. So we're going to use this, all right? Uh, this is the amount of joint oscillation. This is the, the, the emojis are based on uh, from a snow lover's perspective, okay? So if you're a snow lover, th these phases of phase four, five, and six right here, uh, these uh, which we're going through right now, see how it's moving through? This is the way it's going. It has to go through phases four, five, and six. Well, these aren't very good phases for snow, so that gets this emoji right here. All right, you can see that here. Here's phase four. It's a mild phase. Phase five is a mild phase. Phase six is a mild phase. This is not what you want. These are not very good, okay, for cold and snow, at least not sustained. Uh, transient shots like we might have two days, and then it's gone. That's what we're going to have. This is where it's go headed over the next couple of weeks right here. Now, once we get into, you see the timeline here. There's each, each one of these little along this line is a timeline. Uh, so the started off the 19th of January goes to the 19th of February. Okay, so 19th, 19th of, of January are right here. 21st of February of uh, 19th of January. I'm sorry, is right here. 19th or 21st of January where we are right now is right about here. So we just keep going along this timeline. So by the time we get into the second week of February, we have this transition week right here in phase seven. See that? Now phase seven. If you look on the chart over here, uh, slightly above average, but it's transitioning, okay? And then we eventually continue into phase eight, which that's an uh-oh phase, uh-oh for cold and storminess. And you can see that uh, right over here. Here's what a phase eight looks like. It's cold, and it's also very stormy. So uh, this is what I try to, so a lot of people are emailing us saying, well, I don't understand this. Matt and Julian oscillation chart you're talking about. Well, what this is just a measure of uh, the Pacific, uh, the, the greatest convection in the tropical equatorial Pacific. That's what we're doing. And uh, the, 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 the convection, the greatest area of convection will send whole uh, poleward heat fluxes that will uh, basically change the jet around, uh, amplify the jet, and give you a different pattern uh, downstream 
in the United States and this is what the different patterns look like okay so we're just trying to follow this is the a big driver of our weather the Matt and Julian oscillation so this prediction uh, in the four five six phases are warm and not good for snow so you get these little emojis this is like uh oh something's coming maybe we're transitioning and then uh oh phase eight so by the time we get to the second week of or actually the end of the second week toward the middle of the month the middle of February we're down here and that's why I think there's something big potential that could be could be down the road if this continues and this uh, this is correct in this projection. I do think it's projecting uh, correct in that projection, and uh, we are going to start seeing that transition again during the second week of February. But it's not going to be full blast just yet. So you'll still have some snow risks that are going to come in there during the second week of February. They will return then uh, once we get toward the middle of the month and beyond, and we get these favorable phases here. Uh, 812, these are all stormy phases and, and very cold phases. You can see that here. Here's phase one, phase two, even phase three in January, February, March. So these could be wild if they continue into this, into these, uh, phases like this, uh, at the end of, uh, the end of February, maybe even early March. We'll see. Uh, it's a little too far out to go beyond, beyond just, uh, it's actually too far to go out this far into February, too. I really don't like going out that far, but at least we can get an idea of where we're headed. Okay, so that's what we're looking at down the low, down the road. Uh, mild weather, as far as summary, uh, mild weather continues to dominate through the first week of February, but still some transient cooler shots. And again, they're going to be two days and just kind of back to near normal or maybe slightly above. Back-to-back -back Great Lakes cutters uh, to bring rain to the entire region Tuesday and again next weekend. Next weekend's probably going to be Sunday when that second uh, cutter, uh, Great Lakes cutter goes through and uh, brings us more rain. But we are too warm for both of those, so we're just expecting rain for the entire region. And then winter is expected to make a return from just after the Super Bowl through the end of February week two. Okay, and that's when that that's just the period when it returns it's going to continue beyond that we're going to have winter straight through the end of february it looks like and then possibly a significant snow uh, storm potential in the middle of the month and beyond we'll be watching for that again it's too early for, for specifics but if this ends up working out and the euro weeklies that are suggesting this are heading into phase eight here that's when it can get pretty wild here in february some of our biggest storms can occur when that uh, that takes place one last thing i want to talk about is the epa wa progressive web app Okay, we've had this out since the beginning of December. We haven't really marketed this too well uh, because we've been so busy with different uh, different events and, and uh, my pocket meteorologists and things like that. But we do have, if you have the old, uh, old EPA WA app that's on your phone that you downloaded from the App Store, you can get rid of it. It doesn't work. Uh, it hasn't worked for quite some time. Uh, if you, whether you knew that or not, it's, it's not going to, it's not functional. So again, we are we do not support that, so get rid of that. That's from several years ago. We now have a progressive web app, which means you don't have to download it from the App Store. All you have to do is from a mobile device, go into your browser, your mobile device's browser, and just type this out, HTTPS, okay? And it's m.epawaweather.com. All right, and this is the what the front home page of the app will look like uh, when you get it, and then you have all the different uh, menu items that you can search for, and, and it'll bring you. You can use this as a native app afterwards. You can uh, once you now once you go to that site, it's going to ask you to allow location detection. Make sure you do that because if you don't, your 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 app will not work properly. And the notifications, accept notifications when you're prompted. Uh, again, that's part of the functionality of the app. You won't be able to access all the features if you don't allow location detection and allow notifications. All right, this is not we're not spying on you. <laughs> All right, so this is just so the the app works properly the way it's designed to do, and then you have the ability to save your mobile device, uh, save, um, save this app, this progressive web app, the web page to your mobile device home screen for future use, and uh, you just you're basically saving the web page, and then once you save the web page, it will act as a native app in the future. Again, you don't have to download this from the App Store. This is not something you have to download from the App Store. All you have to do is go to this address right here, okay, on your browser. It'll prompt you to, to allow notifications and location, and you allow those, and then you have the ability to save this as a web page on your home screen, on your app, and it worked on your phone. It'll work just like an app, like a native app at that point, and you can access it any time as long as you have an internet connection. It'll it'll work uh, and it is completely free. I'm Easter PA Weather Authority meteorologist Bobby Marchers. That is the, this edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, January twenty first. 
Hope to have another uh, edition on the 28th and have a better handle on this uh, change to back to winter at that time. As we get a little bit closer, we should have a better idea of what the, the finite dates are going to be and when this is going to occur. And uh, possibly any, any wintry systems are going to be on the horizon. We get a little bit closer each week and uh, we have a better handle on what's going to go on downstream. Okay, take care. I'll see you next week. Go Birds!